Now I realized in my last video that I missed a massive part of the first phase of WooCommerce integration in Bricks, the ability to add in filters to your shop. So let me rectify that with this really quick overview of this incredibly useful new feature. So this is basically what I'm going to show you. I've already covered the whole setting up the shop side of things. I want to show you how these filters work and how this is all integrated directly into the Bricks Builder. So this is the kind of thing you can expect to see. And you can see I can simply just filter based upon my interests. I can filter based upon things like price ranges. So I can adjust this and say I'm interested in things over £55. You can see there's no products there in that range. Drop that down a little bit and it'll filter those based upon that information. And then if I want to, I can easily come in and then just stack another one and say, I'm only interested in hoodies in that price range. And then we can sort of drop in and take a look at the product. All the kinds of things you used to see, but the fact that this is built directly into bricks, it's pretty cool. So let me just show you how easy it is to start adding these into your designs for WooCommerce. So I've simply modified the original template in the original video to give me a second column now on the left hand side where we're going to put our filters. And if we take a look at the WooCommerce widgets on the left hand side, we have an option for product filters. We'll drag and drop that into our design and you can see this now asks us to create a single filter, at least one filter. So we can select that and then we have this simple set of options on the left hand side. First of all, we've got the filters which we can start adding those in, in the same way that we can do when it comes to dynamic data. We can just choose as many filters, stack them in whatever order we want, all pretty cool. If we hop over to the title, this is where we can drop in the various title information and we'll come back to that in a little bit. So let's take a quick look now at just creating our first filter. Hop back into the filter section and we'll keep this really simple and we'll just choose one of the three options. Now, even though it looks pretty minimal in what you can do inside you, there's more options inside these. So for example, if we come down to other, we'll find if we expand the filter type out, there are several other types of filters inside you. If we come back up and change this over to something like taxonomy, then we can choose to filter based upon other things as well, like product type, visibility, categories, those kinds of things. And finally, if we take a look at product attributes, if you have products with attributes, so this is something you need to set up inside your products. If you find you have products selling on your store that have no attributes, there'll be no options available. We're just working with the default sample data that WordPress and WooCommerce have. So if I open this up, you can see we've got things like product color and product size. So we've got some options. So let's kick this off by doing something really simple, like say we want to go through the taxonomy and we'll filter this based upon the product category, which is probably something you'd expect to see. And we'll select that. And then with the filter type, we can choose what type of filter we want to assign this to, drop downs, check boxes, and so on. So if you want to limit this to just one choice, for example, you could use something like a radio list. Or if you want to allow multiple choice, you could use something like the checkbox. So for this example, we'll choose the checkbox option. And you see that now pulls in the checkbox checkbox options that have different categories. You can, if you want to, then show any hidden uh, empty item terms if you want to. So if you have a lot of different categories and some of those have no products at any particular point, this would still show those categories. Generally, probably makes sense to disable those. And then if you want to drop in a filter title, you can drop that inside this. We can say filter by type, for example. And you can see just changes that over. If we want to hide the title completely, you can do that. And you can also set things up to collapse. Now you can see this little dash in the corner. Well, hopefully you can see it. That's just basically a minus or a plus sign. It, at the moment, it's expanded. So if we say we want to collapse this, that should collapse it down and it gives us a little plus symbol. And we can style that to make it larger, more you know, sort of evident, change the color and those kinds of things when we look at the styling options. But let's just uncheck that so we can see those filters. So if you have a lot of filters, that's gonna be a godsend. So there's our first filter. So now what we can do is we can come in, we can clone this if we want to, to speed things up, or we can delete it, or we can just simply come in and add another item. So again, you can see we get the select your filter. Let's just try something different this time. Let's try one of the other options and we'll filter by product price. And inside there, we can say we want to set a minimum value. So we'll say we don't have any products under £10, dollars, whatever currency you're working with, and nothing over 100 And you can see that puts the scale in there for us with all the information. And again, you've got hide the title, collapse it, those kinds of things. So you can see it's very quick and easy to start pulling these things together. If you want to add another one in, let's just say you have ratings applied to your different products where well, you can come in and we could say we want something like other 
And again, we'll come down and we'll say product rating and you can see filter input and we can use stars inside here. So we have an extra option now because we've chosen something that has this particular type of selection or filter input option associated with it. Hit stars. You can see we can now come ahead and choose the rating icon. So we'll select that from there. We can choose from any of the libraries that we have as part of Bricks Builder itself. And we'll say something like Themify, see what's inside there. And we can say we can search for star. And you see there's our star rating. So we can select that option, push the star ratings inside there for us. And you can see we've got the rating typography and we can choose the active star rating. So we could say we'll choose a different library, for example. You can say font awesome solid and we'll just say we'll look for star inside there. And you can see we have a different type of star. And then if you want to do things like assign different colors for the rating or for the active rating, you can do all those kinds of things. So all those options are available and we can stack these on top of each other. We can reorder them, do all those kinds of things. So once that's done, you've set up your filters. And all you need to do now is just quickly come over. We'll save this and then we can test it out. And we'll just hit preview mode and we make sure that we've got everything refreshed. There we go. So we can now see if we adjust the pricing on there. For example, we'll go to 18 and we'll see if that changes anything. There we go. So it changes a few things over. We can also then just use the star rating. We can test that out, see if there's any products in here with a particular rating. And as you can see, there's nothing that matches that. Now, the problem we have is at the moment, we can't really reset things very easily. So if we have multiple different filters and we're getting no results, it becomes a little bit of a nuisance to go back and clear everything manually. So what we can do is we can come back over into Bricks Builder. We can add another item inside here. We'll just reposition this at the bottom. And what we're going to do is we're going to change this over and we're going to set this up to be other. Change this and we're going to say reset filters. And this is going to put a reset filters button into our sort of setup for us. So we can just choose to save this. So now with our reset button inserted, we can just make sure this is saved and pop over to the preview. And now if we set things up like the star rating and we find we get no results on that, what we can easily do now is just simply hit the reset button. That'll reset all the filters and show us all our products back. So really simple. Now, there are a couple of things that obviously are missing from this. We only have some really simple options to choose the types of filters. So it's not going to compete currently with something that's a lot more comprehensive where we can build really detailed facets. But the fact that this is built in and for probably a large percentage of use cases, this is going to be more than enough for many, many users. I think this is really quite cool. Now, this is just phase one of WooCommerce integration in Bricks Builder, and it already offers a hell of a lot of promise. I personally can't wait to see how they handle the cart and the checkout customization parts. And you can bet that once that's released, I'll be putting out a video detailing how all of it works. Now, if you enjoyed this and you want to learn more about Bricks, check out this playlist next. As always, if you enjoyed this video and found value in it, well, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. It really does help. If you didn't get value though, well, feel free to hit the thumbs down button twice as that seems to work pretty well too. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. Until next time, take care.